you're like me, watching movies at home has always been something that was very important to me. As a kid, there really wasn't much option besides UHF stations playing movies in the middle of the day on a Saturday or the ABC premiering movies at the end of a week as special programming. But that was usually larger films or much older films. The availability of films that had been recently in theaters in the last few years, that was a whole different issue. And I didn't have that option available to me for quite a few years in my youth until our first VCR. We entered the market with a VHS player. We didn't choose beta. We were on the right side of the format war. But were we? In this video, I want to explore formats that didn't make the cut, but things that I have in my collection as a representation of what we could have enjoyed. And in a few cases, I did. Now, I'm not going to talk about Laserdisc, or I'm not going to talk about DVD. These are formats that we're very familiar with. Blu-ray, 4K, UHD. These are things that we have as part of our landscape. This is specifically about things that came and went. Things that you might not have seen before in the flesh, or heard about, or maybe you did own one of these formats. So here we have a couple of formats that you're probably very familiar with. VHS is most of our introductions. This is a ex-blockbuster copy of What's the Matter with Helen. And there's not much really to say about the format. We're all very familiar with it. But it's going to be important to have it here as an example of the format. This is a DVD of the Mystery of the Wax Museum. Uh, at least it's a promotional disc, so I could find something a little more interesting than just a typical disc. And we're going to need this for reference as well as we go along. So when we talk about home video, the first thing we should discuss is the fact that video didn't begin with video. In fact, it began with film. The very first thing you could own at home of a studio-produced film was Super 8. And there was 8mm before it, but Super 8 really kicked it into high gear. This was a format that was extremely friendly. Now this is an ex-library copy of The Crimson Cult, which you may know as Curse of the Crimson Altar. It was one of the last films of Boris Karloff, and it also starred Christopher Lee and Barbara Steele. For that reason, it remains in my collection at all times, and in as many formats as I can. Pretty much what you'd expect, it's a film. Um, it doesn't, there's not much to say except for that you needed a projector and you needed external sound. And this was not a friendly format, really. It was the only thing that was out there. You had to be a little bit of a tech nerd just to get into the format. Like I said, this was a copy from a library. So if you look, the last time this was rented was in 1978, in January 4th, 78. Someone took this out of the library. And I'm sort of maybe suggesting that that person didn't return it, and that's how I ended up with it. That was not me, of course. 1978, I was not anywhere near Glen Burnie, Maryland. So then we get to the VHS era, but, you know, that was 1977 that the VCRs were introduced, the VHS VCRs were introduced. A year before that, there was actually Betamax on the market. And Beta was a format that many would call superior in that it had a slightly better picture quality. It had a little bit more stability to the picture. It didn't have necessarily the runtime to record a full game of baseball. And at that time, that was a big deal. Sporting events were something people really wanted to record. That, and I just think that there was something to be said about the fact that, aesthetically, if you look at the two formats right by each other, there is something that said that VHS had a more modern look to it right from the beginning. And I think that that played a big deal in why it ultimately won the format war, and Beta did not. But I will say that Beta was an interesting format for a lot of reasons. If you've ever seen a movie on the format, you'll notice that it does seem like it was a much more stable picture and the colors were brighter. Maybe that's just me, but my experience with Beta has always been positive. We didn't own a Beta machine. 
And to this day, I do not. I can't play From Beyond on beta or 1985's Creature on beta. This was an annoying habit that both VHS and beta did at one point, which is put flaps on all sides, so you couldn't just slide the movie out. But um, it was short-lived. They pretty quickly realized that they were just pissing off the consumer. Now, these formats at this time were not consumer formats. These were rental formats. You paid anywhere between $65 and $115 for most of these titles. So it was never meant for just the casual film goer. Next up, uh, we have something that you may never have seen before. Looks like a video, it looks like VHS, doesn't it? This is a French copy of Curse of the Mummy's Tomb, but it is on Video 2000. Now this was an interesting format. It opened from the top like that and the video would be accessible. This was a format that in Europe tried to compete with VHS and with Beta, unsuccessfully. Next to it, this is a copy of The Devil's Reign. Now this is a VHS copy of the film, but it is in the CCAM format which is now an abandoned format that was used in France and Africa and the Soviet Union. It is no longer. Now in 1984, there was an attempt to get another format off the ground. It wasn't until the mid 90s that they tried to make it a home video market, but that was VHS 8 or Video 8. And these were the same as the cassettes that were available for your camcorders, but they came with pre-recorded movies on them like Popcorn and The Foggier. There weren't many that were commercially released, so they've become kind of a curiosity. They're not really collectible, though. That's the interesting thing. They have not gathered any massive collectability online, so you can pick them up fairly decent priced. Quality-wise, they are better than VHS, but that's kind of a double-edged sword because while they're better than VHS, there's kind of pointless. Like, you needed so much specialized equipment just to be able to play them that why would you? Everyone owned a VCR. Why would you go to this format? I think they're cool. I think they're really cool curiosities, but that's probably all they are. This is also a video aid, but this one is very special. This is a airline copy from United Airlines of Chain Reaction, the action film. So this is what they would play in the airplane to people who were willing to pay the extra two dollars for head for headphone access to the movie's audio. I know that seems really quaint now that every seat on every flight has its own video system on the back of the seat in front of it, but at this time, they'd play a movie for the whole deck, and if you wanted the audio, you paid the extra money. And so this is a real curiosity from a time that we'll never revisit. Finally, for the tape formats, there's Umatic. Umatic is the big guy of the bunch. Introduced way back in 1971, Umatic was the first video cassette format, and it is a monster. For direct comparison, of VHS versus Umatic. Now this copy is a promotional issue of Dave Cos, the jazz musician song, Song of the Heart. This was a music video. This, this would have been sent out to a television station or a MTV type of broadcast. And they would have actually not kept it on this format. They would have taped it onto a much lengthier Umatic tape for broadcast. But this is not a format you could buy for home, but interestingly, you probably have watched more of Umatic than anything else in video format. And the reason for that is simply because you watched a lot of television growing up. CED. This shouldn't be a big uh, mystery to pretty much anyone. This is a form that came out before Laserdisc. It actually is a vinyl record in a caddy, 
and it would be played at home. Now the quality of the CED is pretty abysmal by today's standards. But at the time, this was a very early format and people were just lucky and thankful to have a format to play movies at home. In Japan, there was a similar format called VHD. Now, VHD worked much the same way. It was a vinyl disc inside a caddy, but it did boast a higher quality than CED, and many of these discs have become very collectible. By very collectible, I mean very expensive. This copy is not in the greatest shape, but VHD copies are pretty hard to come by and pretty rare at this point. So while it's not in the greatest condition, I'm very thankful to have my copy of The Omen. I'll never be able to watch it, but that's a different issue entirely. I'm not going to go much over VCD. It was a format that was made for the cheaper end of the Asian market, primarily in China, Japan. And it's, it's the bare bones. This, this would never cut it today as far as quality. Um, you watch films of this quality as thumbnails on your phone at this point. But for a lot of movies from this part of the world, this might be your only option to ever see them. This is a film called Taxi Hunter, which is a great Anthony Wong starring Category 3, kind of a taxi driver ripoff, but it is way more extreme than uh, Taxi Driver. And while I wouldn't call it a better film, I'm glad to own it on the only format I've ever been able to find it. Does anyone remember DivX? The idea of a format like DVD that you could buy for four and a half dollars, take home, never have to return. Of course, after you watched it, the discs became useless because your player registered that you'd watched it. And if you wanted to open it up permanently, you'd have to pay a fee to buy that movie and access to that disc forever. The problem, of course, was DVD had none of these problems, was not nearly as confusing, and didn't need a telephone line out of your player which today is not a big deal, but when this format was introduced was a huge deal. Not much to see as far as the discs themselves or the chaptering. They never had special features or anything like that for those of you who were all concerned about that. But it was an interesting failure. HD DVD. You probably own one of these or have considered it because a lot of them come with DVD copies of movies, and you can pick up cheaply in dollar stores and that kind of thing. HD DVD used a cheaper laser system than Blu-ray um, to manufacture, but actually came up with the same quality, pretty much. You can find debates all over online about which was better. Truth is, Blu-ray won because it had a different name. It didn't feel like you were just buying DVD, but a little bit better. Blu-ray seemed like a new product, and I think that was exciting for people who just bought a very expensive new television. UMD Video for PSP. This was a format that uh, was introduced to really try and give one more place that the, the video game market could intrude. The idea was that eventually you could just get rid of your VCRs and your DVD players and replace them just with your, your handheld gaming device. It didn't work, of course, and there's a million reasons why it shouldn't have worked, but in the meantime, we did get some interesting releases off it, and the quality is about 720p quality, so it is high def, it's just on the low end of high def. And in the days of 4K, it's hard to imagine. Finally, the biggest curiosity of the bunch, the movie CD. Introduced right before DVD, this was an attempt to get people to play movies on their PCs. And you had three discs worth of one movie, you had to install software, and you had options, too, to go online and open up content. Now, this format failed after just one year on the market for a lot of reasons. But the biggest one was that DVD came out immediately afterwards, had way better quality. And frankly, this was VHS quality, and you had to watch it on your PC. At this point, PCs were in people's dens and their offices. They weren't really in the living room. So it really was a product without a home and it died off quickly. There were a number of titles released, however, and some of them have become pretty collectible online. Do I recommend collecting them? Probably not. I have it just to represent that the format existed. 
So thank you for joining me on this look back at all the home viewing options that were available over the last quarter century. You know, how you watch your movies isn't really the most important thing. It's that you enjoy them. And having access to movies has been so important to my life, and I think to yours too, if you're watching this video. So I don't look back at these video formats and snicker and laugh. Look at them instead as part of the chain that led us to where we are, where almost any movie is available as close as your closest digital device.